Say a rosary, keep an image or statue in your home. And if you are advanced enough, say some of the office of Our Lady. If you want someone converted, pray to her. Once when I was at Lourdes, I was just finishing my visit and I went down to say goodbye to her. It was about 8.30 at night because the train for Paris left at 9. And my last prayer was, Blessed Mother, send me some suffering or trial to save a soul. Now that's a very dangerous prayer. If you think prayers are not answered, try that sometime. But don't be light about it. It's very serious business. So I said, send me some trial or trouble to save a soul. So I ran back to my hotel, climbed up the first flight of stairs, somebody was following me. Second flight, somebody following me. Third flight, someone running up the stairs behind me. Ran down the corridor, someone behind me. As I put the key in the door, there was a girl about 23, 24. I said, are you following me? She said, yes. I said, why? She said, I don't know. I saw you this afternoon in procession. And I just decided I wanted to talk to you. I said, are you here on pilgrimage? No. She said, I'm an atheist. Well, I said, you're not an atheist. You probably have fallen away from the church. Well, she said, I came down with a group of atheists. There were 60 of us. We hired a bus in Holland. I said, where are they? Well, she said, they took a trip in the Pyrenees, Pyrenees today, and I just stayed behind. Incidentally, the bus fell off a bridge and they were all killed. And we didn't know that until later on. And I said, I think you're my trouble. I'm not going to Paris. I'm going to stay here until I return you again to the good Lord. Well, I stayed about three or four days and finally she received the sacraments. Then my trouble started. It's a long distance from Lourdes to Paris. I would buy a railway ticket, they would put me off the train, said it was no good. They would put me off at a station where there wasn't any food, there wasn't any water. It took me a week to get to Paris. I don't know how to explain it, why tickets were not good, I'd buy them at the railway station, get on the train, no good, put off the train. Well, that was the price I had to pay for her soul. And then, another incident that involves Lord. Just at the turn of this century, I was married in Paris, just an ordinarily good Catholic girl and a, an atheist doctor, Dr. Felix Lasseur. He attempted to break down the faith of his wife, and she reacted and began studying her faith. And in 1905, she was taken ill, tossed on a bed of constant pain until 1914, August. When she was dying, she said to her husband, Felix, when I am dead, you will become a Catholic and a Dominican priest. Elizabeth, you know my sentiments. I have sworn hatred of God. I shall live in that hatred and I shall die in it. She repeated her words and passed away. Rummaging through her papers, he found her will. She said, in 1905, I asked Almighty God to send me sufficient sufferings to purchase your soul. On the day that I die, the price will have been paid. Greater love than this no woman hath, that she lay down her life for her husband. He dismissed it as the fancies of a pious woman and decided to write a book against Lourdes. And he went down to Lourdes to write against Our Lady, but as he was looking up into the statue, he received the gift of faith. So total, so complete was it, 
But he never had to go through the process of juxtaposition and say, well, how will I answer this difficulty or how will I answer that difficulty? He saw it all in its utter error and stupidity. And the then reigning pontiff was Benedict XV, and then came World War I. Hearing of the conversion of Dr. Le Sir, Benedict XV sent for, for, for Dr. Le Sir. He went in company with Father Jean Vier, the orator of Notre Dame. Dr. Le Sir recounted his conversion and said he wanted to become a Dominican. Holy Father said, no, I forbid you. You must remain in the world and repair the harm which you have done. Then he talked to Father Jean Vier and turning back again to Dr. Le Sir, he said, I revoke my decision. Whatever Father Jean Vier tells you to do, you may do. Lent, 1924. I made my retreat in the, Domin retreat in the Dominican monastery of Caen in Belgium, where four times each day and 45 minutes each time, I made my retreat under Father Le Sir, Catholic, Dominican, and priest, who told me this story. So the Blessed Mother makes converts, she pays hotel bills, she converts atheists. And how this story ever got to earth, I have no idea. But it seems that one day, our Blessed Lord was walking around the golden gates of heaven, streets of heaven, and he saw some souls that got into heaven very easily. And he went to Peter. He said, Peter, I've given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You are to exercise that power wisely and judiciously. Tell me, Peter, how do these souls gain entry into my kingdom? Peter said, don't blame me, Lord. Every time I close a door, your mother opens a window. <laughs> so remember, there's always the open window for us. And we are her children, and with this I conclude, as, and as her children we say, Lovely lady dressed in blue, teach me how to pray. God was just your little boy. Tell me what to say. Did you lift him up sometimes, gently on your knee? Did you sing to him the way mother does to me? Did you ever try telling him stories of the world? And oh, did he cry? Do you think he cares if I tell him things? Just little things that happen. And do angels' wings make a noise? Can he hear me if I speak low? Does he understand me now? Tell me, for you know. Lovely lady dressed in blue, teach me how to pray. God was just your little boy, and you know the way. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain upon you forever and ever. Bye, and God love you.